I'm Kara Perplitz. I am a master spinner and fiber artist. Um, as a master spinner, I took a six year course on how to spin yarn. <laughs> so from scratch, from sheep, and it's kind of uh, taken me from learning how to do it exactly all the way up to doing really fancy fun yarns as well. As a fiber artist, I do felting, dyeing, embroidery, a little bit of weaving, like everything that could be possibly done with yarn and fiber and fabric. One of my big things is uh, making the fabric and then using it in some way, shape or form. As for inspiration, I do take inspiration from experience and also from the landscape. A lot of my, especially my current pieces are very landscape oriented. I've lived in Saskatchewan my entire life. Like I've been in the southern part of the province, I've been in the northern part of the province, the central part of the province, and those landscapes are so varied. So right now I've been using embroidery to embroider the northern landscapes. And it's just um, mental images in my mind, like I, I can take mental pictures and then just save them for later. And eventually they just kind of need to leave my brain. <laughs> so I stitch them. Those are the northern landscapes. My southern landscapes, I'm actually right now taking the spinning of the yarn and spinning the landscape in a linear way and then putting it together uh, horizontally and it's like one strand of yarn that is just it turns into a picture whereas if you know like a yarn usually gets knitted or something like that but the yarn itself is to stand alone as itself without any further manipulations all of my practices as a fiber artist are so varied so the embroidery um, I will use any kind of, of yarn so hand spun yarn store-bought yarn, whatnot. Um, usually the fabric is either I've made the fabric or I've bought the fabric. All of the embroidery um, stuff I do is never a pattern that exists yet. It is something that comes from my own head. So the embroidery is kind of just another form of expression of, of my experiences. The felting is just kind of something, there's both, there's different kinds of felting. So there's the, um, the wet felting and the, the needle felting. So both can kind of go together and you can needle felt before you wet felt um, or you can wet felt and then needle felt or they can stand alone. <laughs> They're both options. And uh, yeah, that oftentimes takes form in little cute trinkety things, um, little keychains or little uh, Christmas ornaments or anything like that. And then there's also my landscapes, 2D landscapes. Um, I really enjoy the needle felting because you can kind of build it. You can make things in relief as well so that you can give a little bit more dimension. Uh, the needle felting is really fun. Wet felting is great for just about everything. I've done scarves and uh, tunics and toques and mittens and all of that stuff with wet felting is really good for uh, wearable art. And it's nice too because you can form waves and texture with your wet felting depending on what materials you use, how you lay out your wool, everything like that. It can, it affects everything. The spinning, um, yeah, like I can do inclusions and stuff in my spinning where there's pieces, there's chunks of things in the, in the yarn and then it becomes not a yarn you necessarily would knit or wear, but it just come, becomes a thing that is on its own. I made a yarn, I, was, I worked a lot of bingos, volunteer hours <laughs> doing bingos. Um, I play a little bit every now and again too, but what I noticed when I was in the bingo hall is that there's this eerie stillness. There's like this quietness. And then a number is called, and then there's a flurry of activity. Bam, 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 bam. And then it's quiet again until there's another number, number called, and then it's like bam, 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 bam. So I actually made a yarn. I needle felted bingo balls, like the little ones that they call from. And 
yeah, and the uh, so it goes a nice thin singles yarn because it's it's nice and quiet and still and calm. It's the calmest yarn you can make. And then it goes bingo ball, and then I added silk noil in the bingo dabber colors. And then it would go and it tapers out and it goes back to quiet. And then there's another bingo ball and it just kept going around and around and around. And it, it's, it's, yeah, and then it's a circular thing, like it, it's cyclical. So when I finish the piece, it, it, it coils because it's a cyclical game bingo. So <laughs> that's the thought process on the bingo yarn. <laughs> So typically in shows, I, or to sell my work and that, I do shows. Um, so I'll go to the Wintergreen Fine Craft Market and some other just random ones as well, whatever I can find. Um, I am I mean, I'm available on Facebook and Instagram for most of the things I post are for sale, but they aren't necessarily listed. So if anybody ever saw something and said, I really want that they can message me. So I was always a fiber, like attracted to fiber arts things. My grandma, my great grandma, my mom, we all, they all had some sort of fiber art thing going on. They never called themselves fiber artists, but they were crafty women. So they were embroidering and knitting and sewing and all of that. Um, so it's always kind of just been in and out of my life between the embroidery and the knitting and stuff it, it was one of those things that was there but never really you know something that was solid but uh the funny this is a funny story i find it hilarious now that i think about it but i was trying to cloth diaper my middle child and i was like okay hey, i'm gonna make because i know how to sew so i'm gonna make these diapers i'm gonna make these cloth covers everything is gonna be awesome i went onto the internet onto forums because that's how you communicated 13 years ago on the internet was through forums so i found a mommy and me forum and i searched and i asked i'm looking for cloth diaper patterns where can i find some and they sent me to a site called crafter and so i'm looking on this site and they've got not just sewing but they have all crafts like legitimately every single craft you could ever possibly imagine everything everything and I stumble on this picture of yarn and I'm like oh cool that's some nice yarn that's cool <laughs> I wonder what they made with this yarn and like so they're like happy fiber Friday I made this yarn this week and my mind went what just like blown <laughs> I was like what is happening you can make yarn it had never occurred to me that you can make yarn so then that was probably the catalyst for everything I do right now. Uh, the first chance I got when I found that out, I ran out, I grabbed myself some, some, I'm assuming it was Merino. It feels like Merino. I still have that first yarn somewhere. It's <laughs> terrible. It's horrible. I felted it like it was, yeah, I know I totally destroyed it, but it's okay. Cause that was my first one. Um, but I, I ran out, I got, the merino and I got the drop spindle and I like it was probably about four ounces so it wasn't very much even so I made this yarn and like two weeks later I went out and bought a spinning wheel and somebody was like hey I'll trade you a pedicure for this seven pounds of roving and I was like okay <laughs> deal <laughs> and so I took it to my wheel and it was just like this giant like nose dive into the softest rabbit hole you've ever <laughs> ever ever encountered so it's just been like that's where it started oh yeah my kids all sit on my all sat on my lap while I was spinning they um they actually all kind of know how to spin they just they don't do it often they don't play with the yarn all that much right now but they have that skill it's there kind of like when I was a kid right like I knit like this much when I was a kid but I picked them up like how many ever years later in my 20s and started knitting my kids hats and stuff right so uh, one of my short-term goals is to um, get that store up and running <laughs> um, but it would be really nice to have a, a continuous 
a, more of a, a steady practice instead of a fits and, and bursts situation that I have right now. It's, it would be nice to kind of have that nice steady, steady practice. I want to develop my embroidery techniques a little bit more. I've really been exploring embroidery lately. It seems um, it's small and well, it can be small. It can be also large, but right now I'm just working on tiny little things that and expanding the practice. I know how to do all kinds of embroidery and I'm not afraid of taking on new stuff either. There's so many techniques with a needle and thread that are, are like absolutely applicable to just about any situation. And then as for long-term goals, I would love, absolutely love to move into having this as a full-time, my arts practice as a full-time every day in and out life as my my actual job <laughs> not not just my job but also because it's a vocation right it's a, it's a it's a passion it's something that would be amazing i have um lots of concepts and ideas for shows that i would love to be able to pull off yeah it's mostly just the space and the time to create those pieces that i want i have ideas of a scale where you I'll, I have a teeny tiny little piece and I'll just like scale it up until it's gigantic. That would be amazing. That would be fun. Um, okay, so sourcing materials uh, for fiber arts can it can be either very inexpensive and uh, but it's very hands-on when you do that. Like you can get wool from farmers. Any sheep in the field has wool, or not? Sorry, not any sheep, but <laughs> so there are hair sheep, but wool sheep, lots of them. Um, and farmers usually just toss it, so you can get like basically free to inexpensive um, items and or like fleeces. And that's like, but it's really labor intensive. You got to wash it, you got to cart it, you've got to you know, all of the steps. So it's labor intensive, but it can be really inexpensive if that's the way you're going. I'm fortunate enough to have like a wholesale option um, because my practice is so big. So I source all my materials at wholesale cost. However, even at wholesale cost, um, something like a, a kilogram of silk is $256 for just a kilogram. Yeah, so sometimes people kind of balk at the price of something with silk in it because it's Especially like a hand spun yarn, it takes hours and hours and hours, like eight, ten hours to create a hand spun yarn out of like a wool silk blend. And usually I, will, I blend them all myself. And so that there's that time as well. People go, that's $114 for this tiny skein? Like it's like this big. And I'm, it's lace because silk spins in lace. But um, you can make a gigantic shawl out of that. Right. It's it's. So I think it, a lot of times it takes a certain kind of person to understand that, you know, the cost of the item is actually not all that expensive in terms of materials, time, labor, and all of that stuff. So and knowledge to be able to do the kind of yarn that it is. So they also take up a lot of space. So <laughs> you need a lot of room. As squishy as as wool and fiber and silk and fabric is it does take up quite a bit of room yeah so if anybody is interested in in starting fiber arts my my biggest suggestion is just like kind of dive in and, and give it a try because it, it doesn't matter like you're either going to find out you like it or not there's no harm in trying um but like i said i started with a drop spindle and a handful of wool it maybe cost me 20 bucks and i i learned on youtube to start with so I, I found some tutorials on YouTube and I taught myself from there. And so, and yeah, I did that for the first couple of years. It's just everything I learned was from YouTube. And then I took the master spinner course. And that was an eye opener because I didn't know anything. <laughs> I could make string though, so that was really nice. But yeah, so just go out and like source your materials. There's lots of local shops, lots of local people online. Um, your, your spinning guilds and your weaving guilds and that um, are awesome. They have lots of people who are really willing to help you learn and for nothing, like almost so. And then uh, another great source of materials, because that's one of the big things is finding the stuff, is um, thrift stores actually. If you're just starting, don't expect to be good at it to start with. It's, it's taken, I've been 
at the spinning alone for 13 years and I'm only now to the point where I'm very confident in my skills to, to change it or manipulate my yarns in a way that uh, convey what I'm feeling as well as just it's not just straight up straight yarn they are like it becomes art on its own and this is just general advice like good advice for everybody the first step to being great at something is sucking at it <laughs> I've grown up in Saskatchewan forever um, it's I say I'm born raised and aged in Saskatchewan and southern Saskatchewan was definitely part of like a big part of my life for quite a bit of it so I've I decided that knowing that if you spin a yarn in a certain way you get these layers and you can control all of that I was like okay well I can do a landscape that way so I took the yarn and or the yarn and the fiber and I spun it into the three different layers and we get a beautiful Saskatchewan um, a piece like a landscape um, it's more conceptual there aren't really any heavy details in it but it's hopefully evoking that feeling of being on the prairies before I spin the yarn I actually blend the fibers together so that they are um, you've got these little flecks this actually has flax in it and that was like a choice that I made uh, to give that texture of kind of grassy dry wheat sort of feeling and then the choice of the pinks and these bright blues in this section kind of we're trying to allude to the beginning of a sunset and all of the blending is done purposefully and thoughtfully it's it's very conceptual it's very kind of just basic but at the same time it's really complicated and in-depth like it, there's a lot of thought that goes into these pieces 